The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers. Everything for your outdoor adventures. Crokies. Made in the USA. Drummond Community Bank. Costa. See what's out there. And Lumber Rock. It's got the punch of a heavyweight and the pounds of a lightweight. Welcome to the main event featuring the new Yamaha four-stroke F70. Tipping the scales at up to 142 pounds lighter than its four-stroke competitors. That's a class-leading power-to-weight ratio. A haymaker of a whole shot. Surprising mid-range punch. Incredible fuel economy. And industry-leading innovation, performance, and reliability. The Yamaha four-stroke F70. Reliability starts here. At highway speeds, things can get pretty windy. That's why the Chevrolet Cruze Eco has active aero grille shutters that close at higher speeds to improve aerodynamics. With an EPA estimated 42 miles per gallon highway, the Chevrolet Cruze Eco offers the best highway fuel economy of any gas engine in America. Always thinking of ways to give you more while using less. That's American ingenuity to find new roads. What is CCA? CCA has been representing recreational fishermen for over 25 years, and when your rights to fish are threatened, the CCA is there to make sure government regulators are making sound decisions. I'm a life member of CCA, and when fishery decisions are being made, the CCA in the room is fighting for our recreational rights. We need to give our kids the same opportunities to fish as we did. Do what I did. Go to CCAFlorida.org and join for only $25 so you can protect your recreational angling rights. Continuing the revolution, faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Don't forget, the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report wants to see your photos. Head to our Facebook page and upload your best for your chance to be featured right here on the show. In the Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Southeast region, we have Captain Jimbo Thomas. Captain Jimbo, tell us how can we best be how can we best tame the grouper in your region? <laughs> well, the grouper, they've been left alone for the last <laughs> 4 months, so they should be hungry come May 1st, and we're we're gearing up to hopefully go catch some, but you know how that goes when you want to catch them, it, it's tough. But the main species that we target in the southeast region are black groupers, gag, and red grouper. And there's a few different ways to go about catching them. One of the most productive methods, and one of my favorites, is to troll deep diving plugs over the tops of the reef in 15 to 50 feet of water. 15 to 50 feet, I think that's what I said. Any big lip lure works well, but my favorite is a Rapala x rap 20 with a red head and white body. We troll these lures at four to six knots. You want to use some heavy tackle and a tight drag. And when a grouper does bite, try to keep the boat moving, and this will help pull the fish out of the reef. Otherwise, you're going to lose the fish and your lure, possibly. Also, drifting over good reef structure, wrecks, and ledges in 80 to 250 feet of water is also a great way to catch a big grouper using live baits such as a big speedo, a grunt, or a blue runner. Butterfly and deep jigs also work as long as a big amberjack doesn't get to the bait first. Now the basic rig for live bait is a long 80 to 100 pound monofilament leader, an 8 to 10 circle hook, and enough lead to hold the bottom. And then anchoring over this same structure is also a great way to catch grouper and you use that same long leader with a live or cut bait and you want to let the bait sit really dead still on the bottom. Groupers will get brave and come out and grab it. Now most of the grouper that come out of the deep water, they're in the 15 to 20 pound range, occasionally larger. And then on the shallower reefs, they're mixed sizes from sub-legal on up. Now I got a photo here. And where the grouper live, there's usually sharks. And this shark got half of this 20-pound gag grouper that my brother Rick is holding, and we could not reel fast enough. And uh, he became uh, fish soup. 
that head did. Uh, I bet so. Hey, <laughs> a few weeks ago I fished with you, Jimbo. We caught a big kingfish, a 30-plus pounder. You still got that king bite going on? Yeah, we do, man. The offshore fishing has been really good the last week. There's been some really nice-sized kingfish caught in the last week, and most of them have been in the 15 to 20-pound range. But I've heard of fish as big as 50 pounds caught, and the bite's been happening throughout the region. Now, live herrings and pilchards drifted or fished under a kite. They've been, get, been getting their fair share of bites, but a big live speedo or blue runner is what those big smoker kings like to eat. Now, we usually use 20-pound tackle, a piece of 60-pound monofilament leader tied to an 18-inch piece of number 5 wire, and that's to help eliminate any cutoffs. And then we use a 5.0 to 7.0 circle or J hook. And most of the fish have been in the 90 to 140 foot depth range. And the best bite has been first thing in the morning and then again late in the afternoon. All now right. Move, Go ahead. Moving inshore, there have been some really big sea, sea trout caught on the grass flats of the intercoastal waterway and in north and south Biscayne Bay. Now, these big trout, they're schooling up to spawn. And some of the fish have been up to 26 and 27 inches and 4 to 7 pounds. Now, I've never caught one that big, but that's a big trout. Yeah, it is, for sure. Yeah, for anywhere, for that matter. Yep. Now, some of the better areas are the flats in North Biscayne Bay between 79th Street and Holliver Inlet. And then in South Biscayne Bay, inside of Key Biscayne around Nixon's Beach. And then on the west side of the bay off Mercy Hospital and then south to Gables by the Sea. If you're fishing with live baits, fish small live pilchers or pinfish under a popping cork or Cajun thunder, or use a quarter ounce hookup or bass assassin redheaded jig and a ghost colored trigger X shrimp, and you'll catch those big trout. All right, what else you got inshore, Jimbo? Well, inshore we still have tarpon. The tarpon fishing has also been picking up throughout the region in and around the inlets and their adjacent beaches. Look for rolling fish or mark them on your depth finder to locate where they are and then set up a drift using live shrimp, live mullet, or live crabs. They've been biting on both the incoming and outgoing tides in early mornings and evenings. And there's also been tarpon in the bays and around the bridges of the intercoastal waterway. In the daytime, look for schools of mullets on the grass flats and the tarpon will not be far behind. They're chasing them and that's what they're eating. So you want to use a lively six to eight inch mullet in the evenings, you can also catch tarpon around the bridges, fishing on the shadow lines with live or artificial bait. All right, great report from the Captain Harry Southeast region, Jimbo. We're going to go ahead and get to Captain Jimbo's hot spots. Captain Jimbo says inshore, look for those gator trout on the flats of North and South Biscayne Bay, and then offshore, kite fish in 100 to 140 feet of water in the late afternoon for a mixed bag of sails, kingfish, and mahi, Lauren. All right, now let's head way north where Panhandle Pat Deneen is in the know. You also know him as Captain Pat, but he's not the boss of those parts for nothing. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Pat, what do you have to share with us? Hey, Lauren, Rick, how's everything tonight? <laughs> the, uh, the gag groupers, are, are, they're currently closed in our region, so the guys targeting groupers are looking for the red groupers, the scamps, and deep water groupers like the snowies. Um, and like Jimbo was saying, fish, fish your baits close to the bottom and fish them around structure, either natural or man-made. If you're looking for the red groupers, look for them on that natural bottom in 80 to 120 feet of water. The scamps can be found in that shallower bottom, but um, they seem to be better in the deeper natural bottom than even some of the wrecks out to maybe 200 plus foot of water. And then the snowies and other deep water groupers are in anywhere from 300 to 600 feet of water. Uh, natural baits uh, like, like pinfish, white snappers, mango snappers, fish right on the bottom, either alive or butterfly are a great way to go. Uh, but be prepared to get your groupers off the bottom as quick as possible because they like to run back in the holes. And we do get some pretty good size groupers up here. I know there's been a, some record record gag groupers caught, uh, as well as Warsaw groupers. And just I think the last week or the week prior, there was a, 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 a scamp grouper caught out of Pensacola that would have been a world record, but it was it wasn't caught on conventional or IGFA tackle. But it was a really nice fish. All right, what else you got for us offshore, Pat? Rick, everybody's been really happy with this year's cobia migration, especially over the past two weeks. With There's been quite a few 70-pounders, a few 80-pounders, and at least two fish over 90-pounders caught and weighed in. And the best action's been down east um, at the Seagrove and Grayton Beach area, right up on the bar, or right in front of Destin Pass on that incoming tide on the Destin Lip, 
or down west between the Green Tank and the Navarre Pier. Uh, that we've had a consistent east to southeast winds, which definitely favors the cobia fishing. And it's made some pretty rough conditions a few days, but the fish are there. And also look for the turtles and the rays, particularly the black sea turtles, the leatherbacks. They've been holding quite a few fish. We caught two off of one this morning. Uh, and keep a variety of baits ready and keep your rods ready because oftentimes you'll have a very short window of opportunity to, uh, to make something happen where if you've got your finger on the trigger, all of a sudden you go from zero to hero. <laughs> Well, you're a hero both inshore and offshore. Tell me about what's happening inshore, bub. All right, Rick, the trout bite's been good um, on the flats. There's great reports coming in, particularly from Choctahatchee Bay and also to the west over in Escambia Bay and, and Upper Blackwater Bay. There's a lot of smaller fish in the 12 to 14, 12 to 15 inch range, but I've heard of some really nice fish being caught as well. Look for them on the grass in three to six feet of water near the bayou mouse or some grasses near some deep water. And then I spoke with Captain Daniel Pike of Inshore Anglers in Destin. He's been fishing um, in the sound around docks, you free lining shrimps and catching good trout. On the, on the grass, use a soft plastic or use a clacker bobber and a shrimp. And there's a photo that was sent to me by a, a viewer this week, Anthony Ralston, his Fort Walton Beach. And uh, that's a really nice trout, eight pounds with a length of 29 and a quarter inches. He caught that in Chocolate Bay on a live pinfish underneath a pop, a pop and cork. No, actually, excuse me, it was on a Carolina rig. Well, it looks but, like man. he caught it right off of the beach, Pat. What, yeah, was, what else are you catching on the beach or off the of the beach? Pompano has been great. They're, they're especially in Okaloosa and Walton counties. The, the schools of fish are moving east to west along the beach. Um, Holly Isle's also been good in the Destin East Jetty on an incoming tide. The most uh, productive way is to set fish them with shrimps and a, and a two hook two-hook rig, and the guys are serious about it on the beach. I saw a guy yesterday who was working, uh, I think, 16 or 17 rods. But probably the best way to fish them is, uh, weather permitting, sight fish them with a jig and either anchor up right off the beach or, or get your stepladder and wade out to about chest deep water and set that stepladder up and climb up on it and sight fish these schools as they, met, as they move through the area. They're running one to three pounds, and there's also been some jackervels and some jumbo bluefish to kind of mix it up a little bit. So, Pat, I got a question for you. It's d definitely cobia driven because you guys are cobia crazy up there in the panhandle. Tell me, why do you think the cobia fishing in the panhandle is so much better than probably any other place in the world? You know, Rick, I, I, I well, for one thing, it's a, we strictly sight fishing, so that's kind of what it turns on for most people. But we also consistently get big fish, and, and why we get big fish, we're Maybe the Tampa Bay area or wherever doesn't consistently get big fish. I can't tell you, um, but it's like trophy whitetail deer hunting. You're going to get a handful of shots, but it could be a hundred-pound fish. Yeah, I hear you, bud. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and get to the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Captain Pat says inshore redfish in the sound on the north side of the docks in the Gulf Breeze using soft plastics. Offshore, cobias on live baits and jigs west of Navarre. Look for those turtles and fads that he talked about, Lauren. All right, guys, coming up, we're going to talk to Captain Jeff Hageman, and Dave is going to share all the coolest new gadgets from the workbench. So gadget, go man, gadget man, <laughs> gadget man, gadget <laughs> man. He's from Labs. I got a, I got a radio <laughs> The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by CCA, the voice of recreational anglers for over 25 years. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Hookup Lures, premium lures for serious anglers. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. And Maverick Boat Company, makers of premium brand boats. Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder and Cobia. What do you ladies do when you need your vehicles repaired? We used to call Harold, but now we have an even better way to find the best repairs in Florida. Visit BennettAuto.com and click on the Certified Service Centers link to find the one nearest to you. It's hard to find a good mechanic that you can trust, but not anymore. Just go to BennettAuto.com, click on Certified Service Centers, and you can find the best mechanic with the best parts in Florida. Everyone can get great parts and service from someone you can trust. Now, now that's, that's something, something to cheer about. about. The Johnsons, right? Yeah. Which house is yours? The one with the Silverado out front. So, what do you do? Well, uh... Nice. <laughs> and Bingo was his name. <laughs> I... Uh... The Chevy Silverado. 
the most dependable, longest-lasting full-size pickups on the road. For work, for life, Chevy Silverado. products right here at the Jägermeister workbench yes. always a big fun part of the show so it's yours Go well ahead. we're going to we're going to start with uh, some roots rock reggae brother this is the new <laughs> reggae wash mitt from Starbright Starbright makes a lot of cool stuff I mean, I, I, I I put a lot of their stuff in my magazine cuz they, they they have to do a lot to do with boat cleaning and well there's acres of boats and gosh you knows you need you need cleaning, good stuff. stuff. You know what? It's just like anything else. You know, if you have the right tool, it makes the job a lot easier. That's and, right. you know, you hear a lot of horror stories about trying to get stuff off a boat. Well, if you get the right stuff, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a big elbow grease thing. Right. You know, if you get the right stuff. And you're oh, yeah. always going to, you know, boats are always going to make that elbow work a little bit. Yep. But if you got something like this Starbright Instant Hull Cleaner, which cleans the scum right off. It's got a little picture there. shows you how clean it gets. You don't only have to wipe it down. It uh, it's pretty good for the environment. It's not it's not really a crusher. Gets stains off like little rust stains and whatnot. So you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do some heavy duty cleaning, this is the kind of thing you want to reach for. Um, if you're just gonna be doing some polishing on your boat, you know washing the boat, just a regular wash down. And and you go to not taking wax off. This will take wax off and that kind of stuff. Right. It goes all the way through down to the gel coat. And, and this is clean. this is one of Ridge's favorite. Toys. I'm sure that you have to put him through some, he's put some acreage underneath that thing, Absolutely. hasn't he? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's kind of the way he earns money for gas and all that right. stuff is when I come home from fishing, he'll wash the boat. But since Starbright sent us some of these mitts, it's amazing how much cleaner Yeah, well, they say these microfibers, there's these tiny microfibers in here, they pick up everything. These are great for, for not only when you're, uh, when you wash the boat, but for just drying it too. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good like a, a little chamois deal. And we're going to so, talk a lot about their stuff over the yeah, next 22 got, weeks. They got lots of products. We've got tons, tons of Starbite stuff. So this, these are the new Castmaster, the Acme Castmasters. I mean, we've, you know, everybody's seen Castmaster spoons, especially if you're, you know, a freshwater guy. I mean, they they were been known for freshwater spoons, and they make some saltwater stuff. But these are some new big saltwater Castmaster spoons. Really heavy duty. Uh, uh, hardware yeah, on them. Yeah, I see you know, that. this is the one with the jig, the vinyl jig on it, kind of like a tube jig there. Right. Um, th the good thing about these things is they're made out of solid brass. Wow. They're machined from solid brass and then chromed, so you don't have to worry about them rusting or breaking or falling apart. You know, and they'll cast, and you control with them or cast with them. And, and Dave, what everything is this? eats a spoon. Well, this is a pretty cool little thing. Um, it's got a little cap on here, but this turns your iPhone. It's from Optrix, and you put your iPhone in here. And it turns your iPhone into a waterproof movie camera. You slide it, you've got an iPhone 5, you slide it in this little dolly, close it in. It's waterproof now. You have various mounting little things you can mount. And it has this wide angle glass lens that really makes your iPhone so into a really... So you can put really, this under the water. Right. And, and, and like that, you control, you can control everything with this plastic screen on the back. And it, I don't have an iPhone 5 where I'd put one in there. I don't have an iPhone 4. Now, 4 won't fit in here? Four is a little too tight in there. I think you need a five. To put oh, okay, in there. good. A little thinner. Yeah, it's a little thinner, but okay. I think they make them for iPhone fours too. Okay. They, these are some new jigs from Williamson. Now these these are really cool little jigs. I they mean, are. Um, and Glenn, he took off with several packs of them actually when he took. You off. sound disappointed. <laughs> he got a bunch of them. The go <laughs> Gomoko and the Gomami. Now the Gomami is the. Here's a Gomami. Right, that's the one Different with the curve, yeah. the curve in it, and uh, it you know it's a nice fluttering. It's wider, it flutters. It's a softer action, and then the little the little gomuku, G O M O K U. It's more of a straight, straight bodied, really erratic action. So question, here question is: Are these spoons also not just made for jigging, but can we cast you and cast, retrieve? You could do you know a snook will eat that, a bluefish will eat that. You know, a redfish will eat it. You know, 
if a red fish would eat a regular spoon, I couldn't imagine oh, I'm why sure he wouldn't eat that. Like crazy. Yeah. 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 They're not that brilliant. Tell me about the big light. Dave. Okay, we got some cool Coleman's. These are the C C CSP 75 and the CPX 6. This this is a recharge has a rechargeable battery and it has six little modes on it where you can go here you can filter through these modes here you can get ultra bright and then you got the little less and then you got the little less and then you got red. So if you red. at nighttime you know, or you can put this whole disc on there. Because oh. at night, you know, if you flash that light in your eyes, it blows your night vision. But if you shine that red light on stuff, it doesn't blow, it doesn't blow your night vision away and you can, I like you can still see stuff after you shine it for a little bit. That's my favorite color, you know, red. Yeah, well, it, you know, it doesn't last underwater. If it's your favorite water lure color, you know, it doesn't no, do no, you any no, good, I'm no, just saying. No, I like red cars, you know. <laughs> but anyway, Coleman, long known for making great stuff. This is 700, and, I mean, it goes 50, 1,500 feet, 750 lumens. It's got a really cool rechargeable battery pack. I was going to ask you about that. As a rechargeable battery pack, or it also comes with the same a little extra. You can uh, buy one that just fits four D batteries and, and goes in there. All right, well. So you can have battery or rechargeable. I gotta tell you, that segment was lights out. Lights out. All right, Lauren. It's lights out. <laughs> we, we got enough corn over here to start a yeah, farm. That's oh, so corny. man. You know, I was gonna say, you two, I bet if we asked the wives, you two would be awfully sweet dusting the baseboards with that Starbright mint as well. Oh. oh yeah, ah, I think nice. so. Nice. Let's not yeah. bring that up. <laughs> don't wanna talk about it. All right, they don't wanna talk about it. In that case, let's head to the Yeti Northwest region where Captain Jeff Hageman has been patiently waiting to talk grouper with us. Hey, Jeff, you're up. How you doing? All right, let's talk some grouper. All right, they can be found throughout my region most of the year round, from inshore to near shore to offshore. Uh, most of our fish are around, found around rock piles, ledges, high relief structures. Pinfish and big fish are one of their favorite baits, one of the favorite baits to use up here as far as live bait. Baits go, squid, sardines, um, anything fresh you can get cut up. Uh, small grunts work really well too, cut up. Um, we've got most of them up here, gags, blacks, reds, stamp, stamp, excuse me, yellow edge, snowies, and of course the big one, the glide grouper. Or can be found in anywhere from four to hundred plus feet of water. You want to use heavy, heavy, heavy tackle, a four size reel, high speed. You want something you can really crank the line on there quick. Which rod with anywhere from 50 to 80 pound main line, 100 pound leader, and the smaller butterfly takes up your big the smaller butterfly jig rods and outfits are getting a whole lot, a whole lot of popularity up here. 80 pound braid on those, and they're getting more and more popular. They're smaller, they're lighter, they're easy to handle all day long. You don't have that weight in hand, and they've got all the action you can use for those. All right, also off the door, go ahead. Captain Jason Lineberger of Ruthless Fishing Charters out of St. Pete reports a great kingfish bite. Right now, you want to target the artificial reefs and wrecks and the hard bottom, and also the shipping channel. Blue runners and thread fins have been working really good. You want to use a size number four to number seven size wire. If you're getting cut off and you're starting to catch some bigger fish, bump up your wire, but a number four usually gets you away from getting cut off. Um, a number two aught live bait hook and a number four stinger behind that and a treble hook and a 4X has been the rig everybody uses. All right, you ready to go inshore there, Daddy? Let's go inshore. Catch okay. Mike Anderson of Real Animals. Out of Tampa Bay reports a great redfish bite throughout the whole bay right now. Most of the fish are being pulled up on the top of the tide. He's using live and cut bait. And most of the fish right now are slot or just above. So most of those fish you're going to have to turn back. It's a lot of fun to catch. And as far as artificials goes, he's using a Strike King swimming mullet in the caffeine shed. And he says that's been working really well. What else also in short? Mm -hmm. I got trout. Great trout bite from Crystal River to Keaton Beach. Right now, good limits of trout are easy to catch and easy to obtain. Some good sized fish. So here, most of the fish are being found anywhere in three to eight feet of water over the grass. You know, the bottom, I talk about that a lot when I talk about trout fishing. That broken bottom is anywhere where you're going to have sandy potholes mixed in, and those probably use those as ambush points. Uh, small pin fish under a Cajun Thunder or a, a New Penny jerk bait in white or New Penny, I said that already, and that past assassin with a quarter ounce big head has been the artificial bait of this. All right, Hag, I got a couple questions for you. You know, up in the, you got the biggest region, obviously, of all the captains, and certainly your region goes all the way up to Apalachicola. I sent you a couple names. 
So I want you to make sure you call those guys next week and get us a report from up there because I know they got some really good fishing going on. But my question is, these tarpon, I saw them the other day at Flamingo, everybody marching north on the west coast. They're coming to Boca Grande this time of year. Do you guys primarily set up on the outside beach to the north or to the south of the pass as the fish come in? Right now, I spent the day at Naps Point, which is basically just below Sanibel, and that's where I was staging up. I'm waiting for those fish to get to me, and they're slowly trickling this way, like you said. Uh, we got a pretty good school at Fort Myers Beach right now, and um, towards San Carlos, and then there's a pretty good lot of fish right now in front of Naps Point, and that's where I've been fishing today. All right, so if you wanted to catch one this week, what would you suggest to the guys down there in that region? I know it's not your region, but certainly you're there living it right now. Um, either you're gonna get out on the beach, you're up in dead bait with either cut catfish, cut mullet, cut ladyfish, that works really well. A lot of the guys do that. Or you can slow troll with your trolling motor, thread fins behind the boat. Just get going downwind and look for free jumping fish. There's a lot of fish right now that are singled out and there's big schools of thread fins out there, and you want to look for mud on the beach. All right, good. that's a good report from the Yeti Northwest region. I appreciate you, Jeff. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Drummond Community Bank Northwest Regional Hotspots inshore. Captain Jeff says, snook on the outgoing and incoming tides, fish the creek mouse and the cuts, and then offshore, kingfish and the shipping channel and the artificial reefs and wrecks, live thread fins and runners for bait, Lauren, is going to be your best chance. Sounds good. All right, stick around, guys. When we return, we're headed across the state to the Northeast with Captain Russell Theron, and then we'll check in with Jim Ross in the Central East. Lots more to come on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Hey.